Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video. And in this one, we're gonna talk about recession, specifically for an upper canine. And I'm going to show you the dilemma between two main techniques that I use in my practice and how I offer advice to another doctor who is practicing in Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, this is Dr. Tomislav Domic, who contacted me and sent me an email with some photos and told me that he has a problem deciding between a connective tissue graft and a tunneling graft for this uh, particular case, which is a very common dilemma. So I decided to create this video series uh, to help Dr. Domic, but also other doctors that may be interested in the same question. So Dr. Domic, you are not alone. We have so many different types of techniques to treat gingival recession. And it's honestly a little bit confusing. A lot of them work very, very well. And uh, if you practice enough, you can master them. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of research or good research to tell us which is the best technique to utilize in, in any particular case and also what is the best long term. So my advice to you is rely on your own experience when it comes to any type of surgical procedure. Uh, know all techniques available. You're a perinol specialist, so uh, th that's your job to, to know it all. And based on the particular situation, try to assess what are the challenges and the risks with each procedure, which one has the most advantages in the particular case. Define the treatment goals. Is it just recession? Is it also improving tissue quality? And look at the big picture and then make a decision. Now, it may be that two options are just equally good, and the one that you do better is the one you'll choose. So let's look at the case that you sent over. This is a patient that has recession on an upper right canine, a little bit on the premolar as well. And you were contemplating between the conventional connective tissue graft with a coronal reposition flap and the tunneling technique with a connective tissue graft, which is, you know, both are very good um, options for, for a case like that. But before we decide on the options, make an effort to understand the surgical site in great detail. Don't, don't jump to treat. Look at the criteria for success. What are the chances of success, regardless of the, regardless of the procedure in this case, and have a very thorough understanding of what are the challenges for each procedure. So if I'm looking at the site and I try to mark the mucogingival junction, we can see that this is a Miller class one recession type that it looks like the interproximal tissue is adequate and I would love to look at a, a radiograph to see the interproximal bone levels so I hope you can take a look at that. Um, the recession is about five six millimeters in in length and we have about a millimeter of recession on the premolar and we're seeing that the zone of keratinized tissue is relatively minimal between one and two millimeters uh, what I can tell from the photo is what is the level of the attachment, and that will depend on the probing depth on the buccal surface of the tooth. And that's also very, very important to know. So a Miller class one recession lesion, meaning extending coronal to the mucogingival junction with good interproximal tissue, minimal keratinization, and at the moment, an unknown, unknown level of attached gingiva. Uh, we're looking at about five five or six millimeters of recession. It looks like it's a little bit inflamed. I'm not sure if you did a cleaning uh, when this picture was, uh, was taken. I, I see some marginal inflammation. And there's definitely a mucosal pull, possibly a frenum pull as you're marking down here with your probe. And this picture shows exactly the border between the mucosa and the attachment and the potential challenge later on in the surgery to treat this type of recession. The side view uh, shows the um, root configuration. It looks like a flat architecture, so I'm not sure if you added a composite or you took away a composite, but what I'd like you to pay attention to is the canine prominence, which is very typical. Very commonly, there is a bone dehiscence or bone fenestration, and all in all, very thin and fragile tissue that can create a challenge when you are treating this uh, recession later on. 
So pay attention to these, um, let's call them the weak spots or the risks involved with treating an upper canine. The anatomy of the root is currently flat, which is actually ideal for grafting, and we need to make sure that it stays the same when we perform the procedure. So if the uh, root architecture or the anatomy is not flat, which it's not anatomically, we need to perform root flattening because that decreases the avascular area to be grafted and increases the chances of the procedure working. Okay, so keep in mind that the having an exposed root, especially with a cane, is not enough. The common practice is to flatten it a little bit to allow the graft to adapt in a better way and also and increase the chance of vascularity. So to your question, what is the best options for, for treating this recession? We have definitely a few. Uh, and what are the chances of success short-term and long-term for each procedure? So these are uh, really important questions that you need to think about before performing the procedure. And of course, your patient is trusting you to recommend the best option and is also trusting you to deliver a treatment that will be long-lasting. So I recommend you watch the video on how to predict success with soft tissue grafting that I put out there about a year ago. It talks about the different criteria that I look into a surgical site before I do it and try, try, try to predict success. There's no guarantee. But we can look at the different factors the patient is presenting with and make an educated assumption and that's what I recommend you do. So watch the video if you didn't see it so far. So the two options that you mentioned to me are very good options. The connective tissue graft with the coronally repositioned flap. Let's call it the classic uh, connective tissue graft and with an actual split thickness flap. And the second option is a connective tissue graft with a tunneling approach, which is considered a pedicle graft and also works great. There are two more options uh, for this type of recession. One is by using an alloderm or an allograft soft tissue material in a tunneling approach, and also using the pinhole surgical technique and the Vista. That's, uh, that's another option that you can use in this case. But since you asked me about the two main options, uh, I'm going to relate only to them in this video series. I'm gonna talk about the other ones in future videos and training. So how to decide? <laughs> it's an excellent, excellent question. Uh, dentist, general dentist, uh, surgical specialists all contemplate about what is the best option. And the bottom line is we always do what works best in our hands based on our previous experiences, based on the complications that we experienced, and also based on what we see as risk factors. So if you look at both options, both work very well. Uh, I'd like to say equally well. There's some advantages and disadvantages to each one. And in my opinion, the tunneling technique is a little bit more technique sensitive. And you need to have more experience, uh, have knowledge of the instruments that are used for tunneling, and just have more procedures under your belt before you get into tunneling. So I recommend for anybody, uh, and you, you're an expert in that, so you know, I don't have to give you that much advice, but uh, for everybody out there uh, deciding to get into soft tissue grafting, don't get into technique sensitive procedures right away. Get into the basic grafting, connective tissue, free gingival grafts, and get a few of those under your belt. Get some complications under your belt. Learn how to handle complications. Understand how it is to harvest tissue and transplant them and get into the mindset of soft tissue grafting and then work your way up and get into more sophisticated procedures, uh, tunneling being one of them. But uh, both are certainly very good options for this case. So understand both, find the tricky points or the challenges in both of them Look at your previous experience with both in similar situations and then make a decision in regards to which one you'd like to use. Personally, for me, it's a little bit hard to decide just looking at photos, but I love to use the tunneling technique with a connective tissue graft. And if I feel that the gingival tissue around this canine 
is very, very thin, very friable, and it can tear, which is one of the risks of tunneling, perforations and tearing of tissue, then I would just choose the safer way of doing a conventional connective tissue graft. But both are certainly good options. And in this video series, I'm going to discuss both techniques uh, and just give you just an idea about the incision outlines and uh, give you some pointers uh, to help you make a decision between the two. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about the connective tissue graft and the coronal reposition flap. And in part three, I'm going to talk about the tunneling technique. So Dr. Domic, I hope you found this presentation useful. And for everybody watching, I hope this was useful to you as well in making, or not, not making a decision yet, but, but we are contemplating between two types of procedures to treat a recession on our, an upper canine. So if you like this video, feel free to share it with other dentists, feel free to post it on your social media and go to surgicalmaster.com to sign up for my weekly videos and blogs. And I look forward to seeing you in part two of this video series.